Hey, it's Alan Simpson. Welcome. This is a quick course on using videos in your web pages. And we're going to make it responsive, meaning that it kind of uses whatever space is available. And even on a tiny screen, like even a tiny phone screen, it's still say centered in the right shape. And if you have a slide in bar, you know, you can have that slide temporarily in front of it. The main goal being that everybody can see the video without scrolling left and right, regardless of what screen size they happen to be using. We'll talk about doing it both with uh, embedded YouTube videos and with the uh, HTML5 video tag type videos. We will be using HTML and CSS, no Bootstrap or jQuery or anything. I am going to have to assume you're already somewhat familiar with HTML and CSS so that this isn't totally crazy looking what I'm going to be typing here. You should recognize this is basically an empty HTML5 page. Um, we'll start with a, a YouTube video. I'm going to run out there and uh, pick one out. Just browse to whatever YouTube video you want to show on your web page and click Share. Then click Embed. And then you want to copy this code right here. But all you really have to do is click Copy here and that will copy it for you. Go back to your code editor and paste that into the body of your page. And it will look something like this. It's a pretty long tag. Let's go see what it looks like in the browser. And we can see it works perfectly. It's not centered. And it doesn't change size. But at least the video shows. Now the reason it doesn't change size is because we give it a size right here. Let's say the width is 560 and the height is 315. The aspect ratio, which is a fancy way of saying the shape is going to be the height, which is 315, divided by the width, which is 560, which equals 0.5625. You're going to be seeing that number a lot when you work with videos because all the different HD shapes are that. For example, another common size video, even more common than the one we're looking at, would be 720 tall by 1280 wide. So if we divide 720 by 1280, we get that same 5625 number. Pretty much any widescreen shape video is going to be that ratio. Now, the older square kind, something like 800 by 600, if we divide 600 by 800, we get 0 0.75. That's also called the 4 to 3 ratio. You might see that if you're working with more square videos, but typically you're going to be seeing that 5625 number a lot. But for now, we can't have any fixed width or height because we want the size of this thing to vary with the width of the browser window. So we'll remove that width and height, and let's go see what it looks like in the browser now. Well, it's that size. It sure doesn't change with the width of the browser window, so we'll have to use some CSS to give it a percent width size. I use an internal style sheet just so the code's all together. Obviously, you can put this in an external style sheet. And so for the iframe elements, I'm going to say display block, which gives me better control over the sizing. And I'm going to say margin 1EM auto, which will put a blank line above and below it. And the auto will center it horizontally. I have auto save on, so you won't see me saving all the time. You might have to save your work more. So anyway, if we go look at it in the browser window now, it is indeed centered, so that's good. We got part of the problem solved, but the size is still fixed. In order to get that to vary with the width of the window, we're going to have to give it a width defined as a percent. I'll use 80%. You can use any percent you want. And when we look at that now, we see it is indeed about 80% the width of the browser window. But it's not perfect because the height stays the same. See that? So the, the, it stretches wider, but then just shows black empty space next to the video where the video doesn't fit. So that's not going to cut it. We want the height to remain consistent too. We don't know what it is exactly, but what we can do is you specify the height as a calc, C-A-L-C, and we can use that 0.5625 number which we calculated before, times, I wish we could say width, it would make life easy, 
but it doesn't exactly know what width is there. So uh, it's better to say 80 VW. 80 VW means 80% the viewport width, which is also what the 80% for the width is calculated as. So those match now. Now, if you made the width 70%, then you'd also, you have to use 70 VW and so forth. So they match. Okay, so let's go take a look in the browser, see if we have our uh, height set correctly. Uh, so far, so good. Yeah, I'd say that's about right. It looks right to me. Yeah, you can see the YouTube at the bottom of the title up top. So it maintains its proper shape and proper position on the page, regardless of the width of the browser window. And that was our goal, so we're done. Well, for iframes anyway, we better check it out with the other kind of video, such as this MP4. Now you see, it, I'll show you what this is. It's just a regular MP4 video. The name is 1920 by 1080, because indeed that is the size of the thing. 1920 by 1080, you can see that in the properties. On a Mac, that would be get info would give you that. But again, if we pop up our calculator and do the math, as you can guess, 1080 divided by 1920 is going to be, ta-da, 5625. Okay, because they are all that shape, all those uh, HD type things. So if we just put in, let's comment out this iframe one so we don't have two going at once. Um, and we'll put in the video tags for another video. Controls means, you know, show controls in the video. The source is going to be that video I have in the folder there. It's just a regular old MP4 video. And the type is uh, video slash MP4. It helps if you can type 4. I think that's it. Let's go take a look. Oh, wait. I forgot. i got to style it with this. So I have to put comma video. So now that applies to iframes and videos. Now let's go look. Well, it looks like it's centered and about the right size. Hey, nice. Well, wonders never cease. It actually works. Okay. Hmm. Now you can see it gets really big. And we'll address that in a second. Um, let's just see if they both work together. So uncomment the first one and pop open that page again. And uh, there they both are. And they should you know, just follow each other's sizing, and they work fine, yeah. Okay, so that's good. Now, like I did, one way to possibly improve it would be to put a maximum width on it. Realistically, that might be like 1280 or 1920 pixels, so it doesn't become too enormous. I'm going to use 800 pixels here because I'm working on a small screen size, so everything's not too tiny for you. You can slap a minimum size on it, too, 320 pixels is pretty standard, and it'll still fit on any phone, so don't worry about that. Um, so let's see what happens if we put these limits on the size, what happens in the browser now. Okay, it's still growing, growing. Everything's good. Looking good. We haven't reached the 800 yet. Oops. Now I'm getting these black bars on the top one, the width stopped because of the 800 max, but the height kept going. Let me, uh, let me shrink that. Let me make it ridiculously small just to test it. Okay, now I'll widen, widen, widen. See what happens with the heights. I better play them too. Okay, and so they hit the 400, hmm. That's not really going to work, I don't think, having that black bar fill in as it keeps getting larger. Oh, I see. This one has white space above and below. I guess we're going to have to put a maximum height on it, too, so it doesn't keep getting taller as it gets wider. But what would that height be? If the width is 400, then the height should be that times 0.5625 at that height, so 225. So let's say min width, or max width is 400, that would make the max height 225. 
And now if we do it for the uh, the min, that would, well, let's see if that works first. Okay, they're playing, playing. All right, uh, 400, wider, wider. Ah, it worked. They're not getting taller. All right, so good. So we can do the same thing for the min then. Um, first, let's get realistic with these. In real life, your max width's probably going to be maybe 1280, maybe 1920. And then the proportional height would be, you know, 720 if you're going with 1280, or for 1920, it would be 1080. It can be whatever you want, just make sure the proportions match. Similarly, if we say the minimum, the minimum width is 320 pixels, then when it's that narrow, the minimum height would be 0.5625 times that 320. So again, I'll rely on my calculator, uh, that's 180, so the minimum height would be 180 pixels. Okay, so the 5625 is our magic number, and that's how we calculate these things. When I give you the code now, I'll put comments in there to remind you how I calculated these things out. Now, I'm doing this two video thing just for testing purposes. I'm, I'm not suggesting you put two or more videos in any page. You're probably better off sticking with one video per page, uh, depending on your site. Um, but again, you can use these, uh, this using this responsive style rule will help your visitors be able to see the whole thing on their screen, no matter what size screen they're using, and they won't have to have part of it cut off or anything. And that's the whole point of this little style rule. All right, I'll give you the code. I'll put more comments in to remind you of how it all worked. And I thank you for watching, and I hope to see you around the net. Bye-bye now.